Praise Jesus forevermore. So, Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you for grace. I thank you for all trans. I thank you for understanding. I thank you for the privilege to bring your words to your children. I thank you for the privilege to serve your children with the word of life. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. And I ask that our hearts be open this morning. That your word will find access to our hearts. Even to the deepest parts of our heart. Let it break down every fallow ground. Let your word bring grace to us. Let your word be mixed. Let it meet with faith in our heart. Let me profit with your word. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Praise Jesus forevermore. Happy Sunday once again. And I'm very, very glad to see everybody. What happens? Like people that came last week, most of them are not around. What happened to them? It is well. Oh. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Very soon, eh? If you come late to touch, you'll, you'll be outside. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Not just that you, you, you will ask you to come to church. If you come late, you will be outside. And I'm very, very serious. You'll be outside. You'll be out. This place, all of this place will be filled up. Talk about, is that true? <laughs> that was true, right? Very soon, if you come late to church, you'll be outside. You'll be outside. Praise Jesus forevermore. So you that are part of the foundation members of each other, you better wake up and do your work very well. Better wake up so that people don't come and replace you. Praise Jesus forevermore. Because I'm telling you what I see by the eyes of the Lord. It's going to be a massive work in this city. Jesus is going to be massive. I'm telling you. It's not a desire. It's not a wish. I'm not telling you which thing. I'm telling you what the Lord is revealing. It's revealing. Let me just keep it at that. That's not why we are here this morning. Praise Jesus forevermore. So we've been on a conversation. We started a conversation last week Sunday, right? The local assembly. The local assembly. And I began to tell us that the local assembly is the most important teaching any Christian would ever hear. Are you following me? Now, when I say that, I do not mean that this particular teaching, this recording, <laughs> do you understand? Like me teaching it. No, no, no. I mean a teaching or the teaching on the local assembly, are you following me? Is the teaching that any Christian would ever hear. Are you with me, my friends? The teaching on what? The local assembly is the most what? Important teaching that any Christian would ever hear. Because it is, it is the foundation for everything. It is the foundation for what? Everything. Ten ways to supernatural breakthrough. Without the local assembly, is deception. You can't have supernatural breakthrough. You understand? How to grow in grace and know your Lord Jesus Christ. Without a local assembly, you can't grow in grace. You understand? How to have a solid work with God. Without a local assembly, you can't have a solid work with God. Do you see these things? Do you understand? Ten ways to receiving angelic assistance. Without a local assembly, they can't respond to you. <laughs> you understand? So you see why I say that what? The teaching on the local assembly is the most important teaching that any Christian on the face of the earth would ever hear. And if you hear it correctly and practice it correctly, your life will thank you. Your destiny will thank you for it. And that's why I've seen in this season that for Jesus, for this, for this church, God will allow me to teach on this subject matter. And you know the funny thing? Our sister in Ibadan is teaching the same thing. The Ibadan church. Glory Center Community Church Ibadan is teaching on the local assembly. The church. The local assembly. The church. The church of God, right? The church understanding the local assembly. Because it's a very, very important matter. And it's the art of God. Particularly for this season. God's children must be correctly aligned to the local assembly. Destinies are destroyed without the local assembly. And destinies that have been destroyed, once they get introduced to a local assembly, they are repaired. They are restored. Oh my God, what, what, what a powerful stuff. Do you understand? Are you with me? Without a local assembly, destinies are what? Destroyed. And destinies that have been destroyed, once they plug into a local assembly, what happens to them? They are restored. 
Because the local assembly is powerful. It is God's wisdom. Praise Jesus forevermore. So we started last week. We've done two, right? Two teachings. Sunday morning and Sunday evening. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. So we started last week by looking at the book of Matthew chapter 16 from verse 13 to 23. So from verse 13, when Jesus entered the, the, the region of Caesarea, Caesarea, Philippi, right? Let, let me check if I can read nonsense for you. Caesarea, Caesarea, Philippi. So Matthew chapter 16, you have a Bible? Okay, open it. Matthew chapter, chapter 16 from verse 13. So when they had come to the region of Caesarea, Philippi, Jesus asked his disciples, what do men say I am? Amen. Then they began to respond. Some say you are John the Baptist. Some say you are Elias. Some say you are Moses. Some say you are one of the prophets. Praise Jesus. Some say you are one of the prophets. Then Jesus went ahead to ask, okay, who do you say I am? Praise Jesus. Who do you say I am? Then Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus Christ said that what? Wow. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. My father in heaven revealed this to you. No, no, you are very powerful. I have to know it. Do you understand? Do you understand? You are very powerful. You are a powerful daughter of God. Wow. Wow. There's so much of glory around you. I have to. God is showing me what he has planned for your life. You have to now key and enter into it. You understand? Don't be afraid. It's God's plan for you. Hmm? It's God's plan for you. Praise Jesus forevermore. So, I began to say that Jesus was going to talk about his church. Talk about the church. Amen. And the first thing he began to talk about was the subject of his identity. Praise Jesus forevermore. Was what? The subject of his identity. And I said, why is this very important? Jesus began to talk, talk about the church. And the first thing he, he shows us in relation to this discourse is the subject of what? His identity. And, and I said it's very important because the church has to be built on the identity of Jesus. Amen. Now, I'm going to say something related today, but they are not the same today. Just follow me carefully. The church has to be what? Built on the identity of Jesus. Now, whatever we do as a church, it has to flow from that identity of Jesus. Are you following me? Are you following me? Because in talking about the church, the first thing he asked was, who do men say I am? What's my identity? They began to say a lot of things. Some say you are this, you are that. Some say you are one of the Anobis. And I think on Sunday evening, I said that Jesus Christ is not what? An Anobi. Are you following me? Jesus Christ is not what? He's not an Anobi. He's what? He's the son of of the living God. Amen? Because the life of God is only vested in the Son of God. Man can only come to the life of God and touch the life of God and gain the life of God through his Son. So if you say Jesus Christ is an Anobi like Muhammad, Salah Lehu Asala, <laughs> Amen? If you say an Anobi like Muhammad, you're already cut off from the life of God. Because even Muhammad, when he, when he was in the world, he needed Jesus because Jesus came to die for him also. As long as it was man. So anybody that is a human being, Jesus Christ came to what? To die for them. To rescue them. So I said that the identity of Jesus as the Christ, the son of the living God, the anointed one, the Messiah, amen, is very important because it shows the world that you are on the path of perdition and you need a savior. So that revelation of the identity of Jesus as the Christ puts the world in a position of need. That you are lost. And this is the anointed one. This is the Messiah. This is the one ordained for your redemption. And he is the son of the living God. Praise Jesus forevermore. So, are we ready to continue today? Shout hallelujah. Are we good to go? You say good to go, good to go. <laughs> good to go, good to go, sir. You put sir, are we? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. So, let's read. Let's read. Let's read again from verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, 
Whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said something that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom, whom say ye that I am? Verse 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Praise Jesus forevermore. Now look at verse 17. Very, very interesting. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah. Now what's the meaning of by Jonah? Bar Jonah is not a revelation. It's not the bar Jonah. Bar, bar Jonah is son of Jonah. Son of John. You understand? If you, if you check on that translation, you see it as son of John. Blessed are thou Simon, bar Jonah, son of, son of John. For flesh and blood hath not what? Revealed it unto thee. Uh-huh. But my father, which is what? In heaven. But what? My father, which is in heaven. So, Peter responded and spoke about the identity of Jesus. He revealed the identity of Jesus to us. Amen. There was a revelation of the identity of Jesus from the mouth of Peter. Praise Jesus forevermore. He showed us that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. Which is a very, very important revelation for the birthing and building of the church. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Now, if Jesus did not respond, we would think that Peter had manufactured this response from his brilliance. We would think that Peter is so intelligent, are you following me? Or was so intelligent to have captured the revelation of the identity of Jesus. And quickly make a statement before we proceed. We think that, wow, what a deep guy. Amen. For him to have captured the identity of the person of Jesus, this guy is so brilliant. We could easily have equated the response of Peter in relation to the identity of Jesus to intellectualism, to intellectual capacity. Amen. We could easily have equated it to brilliance. But Jesus quickly responded. He says, wow. He says, blessed are thou. Oh, friends, are you ready? Blessed are thou, Simon, son of Jonah. Friends, are you really ready this morning? Is your heart following me? Is your heart following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Blessed are what? Adal, son of Jonah. Blessed Adal. Oh my Jesus. Blessed Adal. So, until you come into the revelation of the identity of Jesus, you can't come into blessedness. Are you following me? Are you with me, my friends? Until you do what? You come into the revelation of the identity of Jesus. Are you following me? You can't come into what? Blessedness. So the blessedness of every man is incorporated into the identity of Jesus. Into the Christ, the son of the living God. So man can only be blessed, are you following me? When he comes to terms with the identity of Jesus. Are you with me now? Are you with me? If the, if the, no, no, no. Jesus, when he says blessed are thou, he's not saying you are a great guy. He's not saying, ah, but boy, why should you, why should you? No, 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 no. Let me read it again. Now, if the word, if the blessed was not important, are you following me? Jesus would not need to put it. Are you following me? Are you following me? It's not that, ah, you have done well. That blessed is not, you have done well. That blessedness is a pronouncement and the state of every man who finds this identity of Jesus. Are you following me? So, in talking to Peter, blessed are thou, son, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Revealed what? The identity of Jesus. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Amen. 
So, the blessedness that every man needs is hidden in the revelation of the identity of Jesus. Are you following me? The what? Now, you understand that? No, no. Get, friends, get me. Okay, let, let me say it again for those that are jotting. The blessedness that every man needs is hidden in the revelation of the identity of Jesus. Now, when Jesus said, blessed are thou, he was not saying, washiri, washiri, that you have done well. Jesus showed us the reason why he was blessed. Blessed are thou, Simon, son of Jonah, for... Are you following me? For flesh and blood has not revealed it. So the blessed, when Jesus was saying, blessed are thou, he was not saying, ah, you are a brilliant guy. You are blessed. You are blessed with brilliance. You are a brilliant guy. No, 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 no. He was saying, a blessing has been conferred upon you. A blessedness has been conferred upon you. You have come into the, a, a blessedness. Why? Because you have caught the revelation of the identity of Jesus. And it was not just, it was not just about Peter. Are you following me? Jesus was in fact, in effect, showing us the state of blessedness that every man comes into once he comes to terms with the identity of Jesus. Are you following me? He was showing us what? The state of blessedness that what? Every man comes into the moment he has an encounter with the identity of Jesus. Because the moment you have an encounter with the identity of Jesus, your life is turned around. You become a new person. It was this identity of Jesus that Saul met on the way to Damascus. And he became another man. Because once you come to terms with the identity of the day a Muslim comes to terms with the identity of Jesus and believes and receives Jesus as the Lord, as the Christ, Son of the living God, what happens to that Muslim? There's a change of identity. There's transformation. The person becomes another man. Are you following me? An encounter with the, with the identity of Jesus turns you into another man. Are you following me? An encounter with what? With the identity of Jesus does what? Turns you into another man. So, it is this that Jesus was trying to talk about when he said, Blessed are thou, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father which is in heaven. Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. So, the blessedness of every man is inched upon his interaction with the identity of Jesus. So, if you don't catch a revelation of the identity of Jesus, and this is not deep, you've caught it already. Once you've got saved, you've caught it. You understand? Are you with me? It's not deep. If you don't, you need to catch. No, 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 no. You understand? But, but in this, in this scripture, God has put the whole world at the mercy of the identity of Jesus. Are you following me? God has done what? Put the whole world at the what? Mercy of the, of the identity of Jesus. Because the whole world came under a curse the moment Adam fell, the moment Adam sinned. So, for us to activate a blessing upon mankind again, amen, are you following me? He needs to interact with the identity of Jesus. He needs to catch a revelation of the identity of Jesus. Are you now following me? Do you get now? So every man needs the revelation of this identity. And I've explained to you that revelation is not something that is deep. Revelation is what God's word that has entered your spirit. Are you following me? So, when this identity becomes a revelation in men's heart, they become another man. They become a new creation. They become born again. When you met that day, they say, Lord Jesus, forgive me, I'm now, I'm now your child. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. What happened to you was that you caught a revelation of this identity. And what happened to you at that point? You became another man. So, when Jesus was speaking to Peter in this manner, it was not exclusive to Peter. Amen? It was not what? Exclusive to Peter. It was a definition of how every man is designed to come into blessedness. Are you following me? 
Is it what? So it's the revelation of what? How every man is designed to what? Come into blessedness. Because every man became cursed and came under a curse. The moment Adam fell, Adam sinned. And you cannot lift this curse from yourself. You need another. Are you following me? You need another what? You need another to deliver you from this curse. You need another to lift this curse off your life. And this another is the Christ. Is the anointed. Is one chosen. Is one consecrated for this assignment. Are you following me? And this Christ is the son of the living God. So the day you catch that revelation that this is the Christ, that Jesus, the son of the God, is the Christ, is the one designed for my redemption and justification to, lift, to, 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 to deliver me from the cause that man has, has found himself under, then that day you come into what? Blessedness. Can you see that the old world needs Jesus? Are you following me? And can you not see that blessedness, blessing is not car analysis. You understand? You can have 500 houses and 5 million cars and you are the most cost person in this world. Are you following me? Friends, never you equate blessings to material things. Blessings are higher than material things. Are you following me? Blessings are what? Material things cannot bring you blessings. But blessings can bring you material things. That's why you can see a prophet of God in all those villages. They are living in one small house. And you, you are, you are struggling in life. But just go there with your uncle and Baba Eje Gbadura for me. Baba say, Mo pa la she, I told you, Lord, ki on no ma laugh mo. Mo bukun fu mo. I bless you. And you come out with that blessing. Haya ba kalabaya and they have. You come out with that blessing. I start seeing changes. Breakthrough everywhere. Financial uplift. You understand? You start seeing great things happen in your life. Hey, can I, can I show you a secret? There are some people where eh, they are wealthy but they don't know God. Because, see, 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 that a man pronounces blessing upon you, eh, does not mean you will know God. <laughs> so you can see that most people, they receive those blessings from those prophets, genuine prophets, men of God. They bless you. You can't be rich with a blessing. But we are not no go with it. It's not every millionaire or billionaire that is a, that is a what was it? That is a ritualist too. No. It's not every billionaire that is into fraud. Some of them have received a blessing from the mouth of a man of God. I don't know how true about the story of Dangote, but I have read it several times. They said they received a blessing from from Archbishop Benson in Daosa. He said he was, he was on a plane. And the Archbishop Benson in Daosa invited one man, I can't remember the name of that preacher and his wife, and he had to go back to Lagos or something, I can't remember the story, and that there was just one seat left or something. You understand? And that Dangote, he was a businessman, there, nobody even knew him. You understand? And he said he offered a seat so that they can catch up with the meetings and all of that. Your father said, they said that was how ben, Archbishop Benson does and pronounced a blessing upon him. So if that story is true, which I think is true, do you understand? That means what you are seeing in Dangote's life is a result of what? A blessing that was pronounced. But the guy is not born again. You understand? Are you following my friends? So, are you, are you with me, my friends? Blessing is powerful. It's only bless, it's a man of, if a man of God, a man that stands in God's presence, presence if he blesses you, you are blessed. Do you understand? That's why like tomorrow, if like eight down go to the guy, the blessing is working for him. He can still go to hell, though, if he does not meet Jesus. So. But in this life, he has made it. <laughs> in this life, he has what? Why? A blessing is upon him. I think they said, Benson, Benson was asking that, what does he do? And he was a very small businessman at that time. That's that man decree enlargement. So the man only pronounced blessing upon his material life. <laughs> do you understand? The man only pronounced, he, he said, what, what does he do? He now says he's a small businessman. So that's why the man pronounced increase upon him. Do you understand? So guys, blessings are higher, higher than material things. Oh. Are you following me? Are you following me? Don't seek material things. Oh. 
Material things won't bring you blessings. Oh. Till today, that God has not come into blessings. Do you understand? But blessings have brought him into material things. Do you understand? What am I trying to say? Blessings can bring into material wealth, material prosperity. But material prosperity does not equate blessing and cannot bring you into blessing. Praise Jesus for me now. So, the blessed are thou here. Are you following me? Are you with me, my friends? Is in relation to you becoming another man. The man that is now in the class of God. Amen. Because this is the record that God has given us what? Eternal life. And this life is what? Is in his son. Shout hallelujah. So the moment we meet Jesus, the moment we encounter this identity of Jesus, we encounter the life of God. Are you following me? We encounter what? And the life of God is one with God. The life of God is what makes God God. So once you receive the life of God, you become a being in the class of God. Amen. You become a God kind of man. This is not all those heretic, I'm, I'm Christ, I'm God, I'm God. It's not all those stupid. You understand? You become a being in the class of God. Are you following me? Because you now share the same life with the Father. Are you following me? So, blessed are thou, Simon, son of John, because you have received the revelation of my identity. Are you following me? So, the first help that someone needs in life is not to give them money. <laughs> that, don't worry, don't worry. I will help you from your poverty. The person has been helped from his poverty, but is still cursed. Are you following me? You can help someone from his poverty and his what? And it's still cost. Because the only, ble- the, the definition of blessed that we see here is that you have now received a revelation of the identity of Jesus. Which now imparts eternal life to you. Which makes you a new creation man. Which makes you a man that has eternal life. Which makes you born again a child of God. So, the highest blessing in this life is the blessing of being a child of God. Are you with me, my friends? Are you with me? The what? The highest blessing in this life is the blessing of being a child of God. You know what it means to be a child of God? You share his life and you are the owner of all that he owns. What else do you want? A child of God. So, the highest blessing a man can ever have in his life is what? It's a blessing of what? Being a child of God. And you only become a child of God by receiving what? Eternal life. And this eternal life is even in the Son of God who has been anointed to pronounce that life on, on us, to, to impart that life to us. But for you to, to, to receive this life, you need to come into the revelation of his identity. So Jesus now said, Blessed are thou, because you have received the revelation of my identity. Are you following me? So next time when you are trying to help people, remember that your first help to them is to what? Help them see Jesus. Is to do what? Help them see Jesus. Is to lead them to Jesus. Is to help them to be born again. Is to help them to come into the revelation of the identity of Jesus. Because without this revelation of the identity of Jesus, if you give them one billion, they are still cursed. That means a man that is separated from the revelation of the identity of Jesus is a cursed man. In scriptures, blessed are thou for you have received this revelation. Are you following me? Are you with me? So, what about a man who has not come to the revelation of the identity of Jesus? He's a cursed man. Amen. So, any man who has not received the revelation of the identity of Jesus is what? He's a cursed man. He can be a billionaire, but he's what? Talk to me, my friends. He's a what? Cost man. That means we have a lot of cost men in this world. And those are the cost men that some of our Christians just want to be like. <laughs> you don't know. You need to, we need to re- start redefining our Christianity. We need to go back to basics. Basic Christianity. Dangote o lori meji. Ote de la o lori meji. <laughs> you are not serious. 
They don't even have head at all. They're not alive. Are you following me? You cannot, you cannot want to be like them. You want to be like them because you don't know that they are cursed. Are you following me? You only, you can, you, you are very blind. You can't see. The only thing you can see about them is their limousine. The only thing you can see about them is their houses and cars and their billions. You can't see that their soul is dead. You can't see that they are not a people. Oh my. Because they are separated. They are without God and without hope in this world. You think you are hopeless because you don't have money. But you don't know actually that a billionaire who is without God is actually the one that is without hope. Without God and without hope. Are you following me? Are you following me? See, see, see. Nora, you have hope in this world than Dangote. Dangote does not have hope. It's without God and it's without hope. You are with God and you are with what? Hope. <laughs> I pray you people understand what I'm saying. In your mind, you might be praying that God should just bless you like Dangote. Oh my Jesus. Dangote has not come into this blessedness that we're talking about. Are you following me? He received a blessing, a pronouncement that touched upon his finances. Are you following me? But what is called blessedness, he has not come into it. And if you are not coming to this blessedness, you are without God and without hope in this world. So a guy living under the bridge is not actually the hopeless guy. Talk to me. Does the guy have Jesus? Does the guy know Jesus? Has he found Jesus? Then he has more hope than the man in the palace who has not seen Jesus. Are you following me? Hey, I'm hopeless. I don't have anybody to help me. I don't. A Christian says hopeless. A Christian is not an hopeless man. Are you following me? A Christian is not what? An hopeless man. Why? He is with God. So he is with hope. You see Christians crying, nobody to help me. I have no hope. How can you have no hope? How can you enter depression? Are you following my friends? Sister Marcia, how are you doing? Baby is, don't worry, there's strength, there's grace. You are with God and you are with hope. <laughs> and you are carrying hope. You name that baby hope, whether girl or boy, hope. <laughs> Praise Jesus forevermore. So the real blessedness is finding the person, the identity of Jesus. No math to spread for Mr. Marachi. Oh, she just relaxed at the back. <laughs> you don't have math, extra math. She's fine, you're fine, are you? Shout hallelujah. Blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. Now, I won't say no, all what I've said. He said, flesh and blood has not what? That means the identity of Jesus must be and can only be a revelation upon what? The hearts of men. Are you following me? The identity of Jesus cannot be taught. When I'm teaching you, I'm trying to lead you into the revelation. Are you following me? I'm going somewhere. When I'm teaching you, when I'm preaching, teaching, when you preach to all believers, Teaching, preaching to unbelievers, teaching believers and preaching to believers. Amen. Because you don't teach unbelievers, you, you preach to believers, unbelievers. Are you following me? So when you are teaching and preaching, however, are you following me? You are not imparting the revelation of, you are not imparting the identity of Jesus. You are creating a pathway for men to find that identity, to come into the revelation. I have to say this is very, very important because of your assignment to the world. You must know how to engage. Amen. Your preachings, your exhortations, your encouragement is, a, is the creation of a pathway, amen, for men to come into the revelation of the identity of Jesus. You can't impart the revelation of the identity of Jesus to men. You can't give men the revelation of the identity of Jesus. And until they come into that revelation of, God, of Jesus' identity, they can't be born again. 
They can't be saved. What does this mean again? You can't save men. Are you following me? You can't do what? You can't save men. You can't make men born again. You can preach to men and show them the path, the need to be born again, on how to be, and how to be born again. But you can't make them born again. Otherwise, Paul should have made King Agrippa born again. He said, Paul, 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 Paul. He said, you know books too much, blah, 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 blah. He said, do you think that by much speaking, you will convert me to, a, to become a Christian? Guy, you know if you convert me. <laughs> you can't put the revelation of the identity of Jesus in my spirit. You can preach, 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 preach. But there's a point I have to get to where I now have to receive this revelation by myself. I'm going somewhere. So, the identity of Jesus, which leads to the salvation of men, amen, which causes men to be born again and receive the life of Jesus, can and must only come by what? Revelation. Are you following me? Are you with me? And this revelation is given by who? By the Father. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. Are you following me, my friends? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. But my Father, which is where? In heaven. Amen. So, the identity of Jesus can only come to Jesus by revelation. Are you following me? He said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. And this is not a revelation that flesh and blood can bring. This is not a revelation that what man's capacity or effort can bring. If it's a revelation that stems from man, from flesh and blood, from the capacity of man, then it is, it is only intellectual conversations. It is only intellectualism. Are you following me? And intellectualism and logic has never and can never save any man. So, that means there's a revelation that flesh and blood, are you following me, always tends to confer. Are you following me? There's a revelation that the strength of man, that the understanding of man always tends to bring about Jesus. But this revelation can't save man. Because it's only a logical and analyt- an, an analytical, uh, what's that word? An analytical expression. <laughs> Amen. And this cannot result in salvation. I'm going somewhere. Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. So that's why when Paul was speaking in Second Corinthians chapter, is it chapter 10? It says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are made to go to print of strongholds, as of imagination, every thought, every knowledge, and all of that. They were not using arguments, are you following me? Or intellectual stuff to counter arguments and intellectualism from men. There was a weapon. And that weapon is mighty through God. The weapon is from God. I'm going somewhere. But my father in heaven has what? Revealed this to you. So if men will be saved, are you following me? Men need your preaching. Men need your exhortation. Men need your encouragement. But men must receive the revelation of the identity of Jesus by themselves. Now, talk to me. Without your preaching and your, and your exhortation, men can never come into this revelation. Are you with me? Are you following my friends? There are only rare cases where nobody preached to people and they became saved. Maybe there was somebody to preach to them. They just said they were in their room and God just came down. Some people, are, some people never heard, maybe, maybe some people never heard the preach, the, the gospel preach, but they just have encounters. Eh? Some people say it's through the Quran. Are you following me? And those things are real. But that is not the principle of salvation. Because how will they hear unless a preacher is sent to them? Huh? So the only real exemptions are not the rule. Are you following me? To get people saved, you have to go and preach to them. Huh? So that is that. Now, 
I said all what I said so that I can create the, the exemption, the place of exemption. Some people just got saved by a personal encounter with Jesus. Nobody preached to them. But that's not the rule. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, I haven't said that. I'm, I'm not going there again. People can never get saved unless you preach to them. Are you following me? People can never do what? Unless you preach to them. And if you don't preach to people, if they don't get saved, it means they're, they're going to hell. So you see that the more you don't preach to people, the more you are saying they can go to hell, that you should go to hell. Amen. The way you pull people from hell is by delivering the gospel of Jesus to them. Are you following me? Because they need to hear this gospel of Jesus for their salvation. Are you following my friends? So, talk to me. So, even though you have to preach to men in order to get them saved, to lead them in the path that leads to salvation, to bring them to the path of salvation, amen, you can't force salvation on any man. You can't bring revelation to any man's heart, to any man's spirit. A man must, must by himself catch the revelation of the identity of Jesus. He must receive it from the Father. Are you following me? What's the point? Don't try to argue too much when you are preaching Jesus. Don't argue. Are you following me? Your argument cannot impart this revelation. Flesh and blood has not revealed it to you. Flesh and blood can't reveal it. Argue till tomorrow with a Muslim. <coughs> you, know, you know how many times you've argued with courtists, with Muslims, with people that don't know you. Did they get saved? But when they just see them, they are saved. Because while you preached that day that you were hugging, 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 a time came that they opened up their heart and they received the revelation from God. Are you following me? They received the revelation of this identity of Jesus from God. Amen. When you understand these things, you won't fight too much. So, people cannot understand Jesus or understand his church without this revelation. And you can't teach, you can't teach that revelation. You can't preach it. You keep preaching the gospel, preaching Jesus, but men will only be saved by this revelation. And it comes from the Father. So when you are, when you are done preaching to people, then you pray that the Lord will open their eyes to see. Even Paul, even though believers were already saved, he still kept praying that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. So if you are already a believer, that your spirit is already alive, you are already a new creation, we are still praying for the enlightenment of the eyes of your understanding. How much more those who have never met Jesus, those who have never been born again, why are you trying to force them? Huh? God we God has to give them eyes. Do you understand? So you don't force people to get saved. You don't force the gospel on Jesus, on people. Just preach. Before you go out, you preach that God should remove every hindrance. You understand? That God should open their hearts, touch their hearts, and all of that. Do you understand? So, after you have preached, you trust God that eventually they will open their heart. Now, when they op- once they open their heart, because man has power to lock his own heart and to open it. That was what, I, that was what Agrippa did. He shut his heart. That poor you'll be wasting your time. You can't save me. You're out the door. Man has power to do what? Open his heart and shut his heart. And until it enters his heart, it is not revelation. <laughs> you understand? Are you following me? Until it what? Enters his heart, it is not what? It is not what? Revelation. But once it enters his heart, it has become revelation and it will lead to salvation. Anywhere there's revelation, there's always salvation. Are you following me? Anywhere there's what? Revelation. There's always salvation. That's, are you following me? But revelation has to do with the heart. Revelation has to do what? With the heart. And you cannot open the heart of any man. 
God can open the heart of men to receive the gospel, but he will not open it. Are you following me? I'm going somewhere. Man has to by himself open what? His heart. God will now fill it with what? With revelation. So, that was a girl you preached to two years ago that was fighting you. You, were, you didn't have to say, you were also arguing, fighting back and forth. That you now saw three years after. She's now saved. Ah, saved is now preaching the gospel up and down. Do you know what happened to her? A point came in her life where she opened her heart. God now filled her with revelation. God now filled her heart with the revelation of the identity of Jesus. Are you following me? And those words you spoke, they were very important because they are the seeds by which God will open, by which God will bring revelation to her when she, op- she, when she opens her heart. And they are even the seed that she will meditate on, that she will contemplate on, that will lead to her opening her heart. So men cannot open their heart unless we preach to them. You need to understand this again. That uh, if they don't open their heart, they can't be saved. So why am I preaching in the first place? No, 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 no. They need your gospel for the opening of the heart. Your gospel is like you trying to break the fallow ground. So when you drop the seed of the word in people, are you following me? To their mind, to their understanding, even though they abuse you, even though they fight you, and you leave. Something is happening if they don't throw the word away completely. As they keep meditating on it, quietly, the word is finding entrance. Entrance. Then when they now decide in their will to open up their heart, are you following me? God can now fill it with revelation. Are you following me? But if the word, if you don't preach the word at all, there is no instrument that can result in the opening of their heart. For your word is quick and powerful, piercing asunder, dividing asunder, bones and marrow. So there's no instrument for, the, for this kind of dividing if you don't preach the gospel. You need to preach. So as you saw the city means that you have dropped an instrument, you have dropped a weapon that can pierce as they allow it. Now when they now open it fully, God now fills it with revelation of the identity of Jesus. Then they now get saved. So what's the point of all this? Stop fighting. You're preaching. Stop arguing. Even we believers, stop fighting. <clears throat> and you understand the secret from scriptures. The highs of your understanding being enlightened. So even if your pastor, if your leaders keep talking to you, wise leaders don't fight people. Because you know, no matter what they talk, what they say, if your highs of your if the of your understanding is not enlightened, it's a waste of time. So the, the best they can do is after they talk. They'll pray for you. They'll be praying for you. That God should open your eyes to see these things. Praise Jesus. So, be compassionate to unbelievers. Keep preaching the gospel to them. Because they need the seed for them to decide to open their heart. Amen? And once they open their heart, God fills it with what? With the revelation of this identity of Jesus. Do you see now? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. So, do you understand that? So don't fight again when you are preaching to people. If they don't, Jesus Christ said, if you go to a city and they don't accept you, what should you do? Dust your feet. Get out. No, why are you arguing? <laughs> why should you preach and not lead to, lead to a fight? <laughs> you know who can preach and lead to a fight? Don't preach and don't let it lead to a You, you, you are spoiled the gospel. You are spoiled your gospel. <laughs> are you following me? So you must learn these things. It's not your preaching that saves men. But, your pre- but men need your preaching to be saved. Can I say it well again? It is not your preaching that saves men, but without your preaching, men cannot be saved. You see the difference? Huh? So this is not altogether doing away with preaching. Without your preaching, men cannot what? Be saved. But it is not your preaching that what saves men. It is the revelation of, of, of God, of Jesus, that they receive from the Father as they open their heart to the words they've heard from your mouth. So don't fight again. Is that fine? Are we good to go now? Praise Jesus, save our Shout hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Before I make this statement, let me read the scripture again. Just pick out one or two things. Before I go into the... No, don't worry, we'll close. Don't say it's a series. You, you, you should be happy any time I'm teaching a series because it means I won't be staying very long. Because it's a series I can always continue. But if it's one teaching, ah, don't be happy. 
Any day I come to you with one teaching, and I say it's long, just know, just enjoy it. But if it's serious, eh, eh, if you don't finish, you'll come back again. So we are continuing this series in the evening. So don't worry, we'll close by 11. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, verse 18, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I say unto thee that what? Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, I'll still go back. Now he says, that down Peter, and upon this rock, I'll build my church. I'll still come back to touch that rock, this rock, I'll build my church, and all of that. But something, something is very, very interesting to me in this scripture, in this verse 18. Don't worry, there's, there, there are many things I'll pick from verse 18, but let me first start with this. Let me pick this. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. <laughs> What's the meaning of this statement? The meaning of this statement is that anytime the church appears, are you following me? Then the gates of hell arise. Are you with me? Are you with me? I'm trying to prepare your heart for the work we are going to do in this city. Amen. The gates of hell are at peace and are at rest until the rising of the church. Until the appearance of the church. Are you following me? Praise Jesus. Get this revelation. Very, it's very, very important to our work in this city and anywhere God sends us. And anywhere God sends the church. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Upon this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So, that means that the gates of hell are lying quietly. They are resting, no agitation, until the, the matter of the church surfaces, until the church surfaces. Are you following me? So, anytime the church appears, the gates of hell arise. Are you following me? Are you with me, my friends? So anytime the church appears in a city, the gates of hell in that city what? Arise. That's why you need to understand that church planting is not a small thing. <laughs> Are you following me? Church planting and the work of ministry is not what? A small thing. Because anytime there's an appearance of the church in a the city, there's an appearance of church in a locality, the gates of hell suddenly do what? Arise. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. And every city has the gates of hell. Has gates of hell. Are you following me? There's an establishment of the gates of hell in what? Every city. So this now brings us back to the work of the church in a city. The work of the church in a city is to confront and put down the gates of hell. Are you following me now? Are you following me now? Just follow me carefully. The work of the church in a city is to what? Is to confront and pull down the gates of hell. Shout hallelujah. Are you following me, my friends? Praise Jesus. Are you with me? The work of the church in a city is to do what? is to confront and pull down the gates of hell. So you can now see that a church that comes to a city and takes philanthropy as his work, you know it has lost. The church can quickly be filled with people. Are you following me? The church can quickly be what? Be filled with people, but it has, it has no capacity to deliver souls from the path of hell. Are you following me? Are you following me? When a church comes to a city and it appears 
to take upon itself the work that his vision in this city, that his work in this city is to is philanthropy, is to build roads, give them good good um, electricity, give feed the poor. When a church takes upon that responsibility as his primary work in the city, or as his work, don't let me let me be firm in this teaching. Don't let me say primary, nothing like primary. As his work, the church only has one work in the earth and the city. When the church takes that nonsense as its work in this city, right from the start, it has lost to the gates of hell. Right from the start. They've not even even started fighting. The gates of hell don't need to fight that kind of church. If a church takes fashion parade, are you following me? Takes economic analysis, are you following me? Takes those nonsense as his function in the city is as lost to the gates of hell without fighting. Without the gates of hell fighting. <laughs> it has surrendered. That church is already a, is a captive in the hands of the gates of hell. Are you following me? The church can get filled with people what? Quickly. But there will not be souls in that church. There will not be souls. Are you following me? Because you only get souls once you have broken through into the gates of hell and brought people out. The gates of hell are the orchestrations of darkness, are you following me, that keep the souls of men in the claws of darkness. Are you following me? Are you with me? The gates of hell are orchestrations of darkness. They are systems of darkness. Are you following me? They are highly power systems of darkness that ensure that the souls of men don't escape darkness. That the souls of men are kept in the prisons of darkness. That the souls of men are kept in the claws of darkness. That men don't escape. So that men will keep attending church but they are not free from pornography. So that men will keep attending church, but not, did I use the word free? Free is as if they are trying to fight for freedom. No, 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 no. That's, it's not, free is not the word. So that men are attending church, but they and pornography are friends. You know when I use free, it's as if they are trying to fight to be free. They are not fighting. That's, that's the context of, of what I'm saying. You know a, a genuine believer can be struggling with sin. Are you following me? And is fighting for freedom, trusting God to be free. That's not the context of what I'm saying right now. So that in a church, Yahoo boys are normal. Are you following me? So that, so that, so that, so that Yahoo boys are in the church and the atmosphere of the church is normal to them, it's accommodating to them. Are you following me? So that in the church, an Olojo girl can dress up on a Sunday morning and say, I'm going to church. And are you following me? And she's going to church every Sunday like that. And the atmosphere of church is normal to her. And they say, where is your church? They say, that now my church be that. No conviction. So that people are in the church, but they are still behind the gates of you. They are still, they are still locked down by the gates of you. Do you understand? So that people are in the church, and they are still in hell. So that people are in church and they are still behind the bars of hell. So that people are in church and they are still in the prisons of hell. Praise Jesus. So that drug addicts are in church. Are you following me? Are you following me? And there's nothing in them telling them to that they need to quit drugs. Nothing in theology can tell them that they, nothing in them and nothing outside them in the church. No conviction. No conviction within, no conviction without. Are you following me? So that men are in the church, they are comfortably in the church, and they are comfortably in hell. They are comfortably behind the gates of hell. They are comfortably in the prisons of hell. Are you following me? So the gates of hell are those systems, are you following me? Those structures, are you following me? That is orchestrated by darkness to ensure that men are kept under the influence and power of darkness. Are you following me? So that the church is filled with so many people, but one soul is not there. Because you don't have a soul until you have confronted and assaulted the gates of hell and have delivered people. And have set the captives free. 
You can't have souls until you set the captives free. Friends, are you with me? Are you with me? You can't do what? You can't have souls until you what? You set the captives free. You can't. You can't. That's why we are in for war. Because we are going to fill this place with souls. So, the vision to fill a church with souls, are you following me? Are you following me? Is an affront against the gates of hell. <laughs> are you with me? The vision to fill the church with souls is what? Is an affront against the gates of hell. Because to fill the church with souls means that you have taken the battles to the gates of hell, you have pulled down the gates of hell, and you have set the captives free. You can fill the church with people without confronting the gates of hell. Are you following me? You can what? Fill the church with people without what? Confronting the gates of hell. And what does that mean? You yourself are now locked down. You are under the lockdown of the gates of hell. Are you following me, my friends? You yourself are what? Under the lockdown of the gates of hell. You are, you are under lockdown. Amen. So, when the church when the church is appearing, or when the church is appearing in a locality in a city, the gates of hell are immediately at a lot, and they immediately start confrontations. They immediately, they, are you following me? So, some people that sincerely want, that sincerely wanted to come and start church sincerely, they quickly see this confrontation and they're not ready for it, so they succumb. Are you following me? They do what? They succumb. And go the easy route. Are you following me? They shall come and do what? Go the easy route. So, in that locality, you now have many churches. Eh? But no souls. Or few souls. You have many churches. People are not saved. Many churches. Are you following me? The atmosphere is still, is still fraud. Many churches. The city is still known for Hooliganism, known for fraud. Are you following me? Known for, known for Olosho runs. Are you following? Known for, known for vices. I'm telling you the real problem of, I'm telling you what is happening. Now. When you enter a city, and churches are many like water. Are you following me? But the city is under the siege of darkness. The, the, the explanation is that what? The gates of, of else, the gates of hell, they have not been confronted. They have not been confronted. People are just doing church easy. Are you following me? They are doing what? Church easy. Just take it easy. <laughs> the battle for souls is not an easy battle. It's a confrontation and an assault on the, on the gates of hell. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Oh, let me, let me enter. We will not prevail yet. I wish everybody knew or knows that the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. So that when you enter a city to start a church, this will be your first knowledge. Are you following me? But people are not even ready to, to get to that part. Because the first thing they see is the gates of hell. They quit. Don't let me go to we not prevail. Don't, don't, let me just continue. And the gates of it will not prevail. So that means that every church that is set up for the salvation of souls in the city must be ready for confrontations with the gates of hell. You see that now? Must be ready for what? So why are we here, my friends? We are here to confront and assault and put down the gates of hell. Be ready for battle. It's not a small work. It's not what? Except you want people and we don't want souls. But it's not me. It's not this your pastor. It's not this your pastor. I would rather have 10 souls than have 10,000 people. And I, and I won't have 10 souls. I will have millions of souls. That's the vision. 
Souls will feel. Are you following me? I'm not saying people. Souls we feel this church to the overflow. We start buying properties and start building structures. And where we are filling with souls, soldiers. Because us, we have come here not to take sides with, with not to take sides with the gates of hell. We have come here not to not to form allies with the gates of hell. We have come here not to form second fiddle with, with the gate of hell. We have come here to confront and assault the gates of hell. So every true church of God, hear this. You are in your city to confront the gates of hell. The moment you said you are starting a church in a city, the gates of hell are angry. Because they know that the church is the only one that can confront the gates of hell. Philanthropy cannot confront the gates of hell. Feeding the poor cannot confront the gates of hell. Repairing the roads cannot confront the gates of hell. So the church is the only one that can confront what the gate of hell. So they now what? They now pollute the church and turn the church to a center of phila- phila- philanthropies. To a center of philanthropy. A philanthropical center. A fashion center. An economic center. Are you following me? The gates of hell are afraid of the church. Can you hear me? The gates of hell what? Are afraid of the church. You hear that clearly. Clearly. Because, are you following me? The gates of hell are what? The gates, okay, let me personalize this. The gates of hell are afraid of Glory Center Community Church, Igondo. But generally speaking, the gates of hell are afraid of the church of God, of local assemblies. Oh, I wish that local assemblies, churches will know these things and take their places in the cities. And no compromise. Are you following me? The gates of hell are what? Afraid of the church. Because the church is the only one that can what? Rescue men from the gates of hell. What is locked up in the, behind the gates of hell are the souls of men. Are you following me? What is what? What is locked up behind the gates of hell are what? Are the souls of men. Are the souls of men. Are the souls of men. When you pull down the gates of hell in the city, you see a lot of salvation. So when you see our fathers entering villages and all of you see salvation, they pull down the gates of hell. So that's why the likes of them, Ayo Babalola, they did not just enter cities and did miracles. Though. They entered cities and did what? Pull down the gates of hell. That's why you saw salvation of souls is gates of it that were pulled down because what kept them in darkness is what is the gates of hell when we begin to make our progress in our in our in our affront against the gate of hell in this city we will know we will begin to know we are, and we are making progress already friends are we making progress we can we will we'll be able to measure see 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 you can measure your progress against the gates of hell in the city you can measure it you will measure it it's measurable it's measurable. It's measurable. You can measure it. Because what is, see, see, what is locked down behind the gates of hell is not, is not money and houses and cars. Are you following me? What is locked down behind the gates of hell is not, is not, is not, is not, is not gold. What is locked down behind the gates of hell are what? The souls of men. So, you can measure your progress out because when the gates of hell are pulled down in a city, the souls of men will escape. And the only way, the, the only place they are escaping to is the Savior that came for them. And that Savior is the church. Amen. So, one of the ways we know that we are overcoming hell in a city, the gates of hell in a city that what? Churches are getting filled with souls. With what? And you cannot defend between souls and people. Uh-huh. Churches are getting filled with souls. It's a measure. Measurement. Don't be, don't be confused with people. I'm talking about souls. Now, let me explain to you. Let me clarify. Souls can still have a struggle with sin. But you know it's a struggle that they're trying to come out of. But people are comfortable in and with sins. A Yahoo boy who has become a soul is trusting God and talking to his pastor, talking to his spiritual leader that, I'm, how can I leave this thing? I, I, I keep seeing myself going back to it. Please help me. 
You understand? But the Yahoo we is still a people. Are you following me? Is even bringing the tithes to the pastor and they are sharing in it. No conviction. And they know he's a Yahoo boy. See, if Yahoo boy comes to church, he has to get saved though. Because we will not collect offering from him. If you know he's a Yahoo boy, we will not, don't pay off, don't worry. We will talk to you personally. Don't pay offering. When you give life to Jesus, because we cannot send you another. Will you stay here? But you give life to Jesus, don't give your offering. You don't want blood money. <laughs> it's blood money. You understand? So, so let, let me thank God the speaker. Let me say it out loud now. Now, If you are a Yahoo, Yahoo boy and you are not ready to be saved, don't bother coming to this church. But if you really want to be saved, if you are tired of your life and you want to be saved, you can come. We accept you as a Yahoo boy. You will be saved there and you, your life will be transformed. If you are a drug addict and you are ready to be saved, come here. If you are no low sugar and you are ready to be saved, do what? Come here. If you are ready to be saved. Are you following me? So a Yahoo boy who is in church, but who is still a people, does not see anything, does not see anything wrong in Yahoo. He's one that even buys the, the he's, one that, he's, one, he's one that finances the church. <laughs> Pastor calls for an offering. They need an offering of 500k. And it's Yahoo, two Yahoo boys raised there. And Pastor knows they are Yahoo boys. And Pastor calls them and they come out. And Pastor says, may the Lord bless you. And hi, Abba. Hey. Ah. Are you following me? Are you with me? You know she's an Olo show girl. And she's not yet saved. And you say, may the Lord bless you. Because she's bringing her offerings. Offering, offering that she, 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 oh my Jesus. May God have mercy on us. So, if you don't put down the gates of hell, men will be in church, but they'll still be in hell. And many churches are comfortable with this. And that's why our, city, our cities are still in ruin. Our cities are still under the influence of darkness. But God does not need many churches to accomplish his, his, his purpose. If God can only find a church that will stay on this identity. Don't worry, I, I don't want to rush. Are you following me? Praise Jesus. And the gates of hell shall not what? Reveal. So the false knowledge is that what? When you are entering a city as a church, you have started a battle with the gates of hell. Whether you know it or not, the gates of hell have was risen against you. You see that you should let your head be correct. He said the gates of hell shall not prevail. That means they will rise immediately. They are fighting. So you must not be ignorant of this warfare. Church of God, don't be ignorant of the warfare against you by the gates of hell in your city. Don't be ignorant. Don't. <laughs> you are not there for fashion parade. You are not there to feed the poor. Also, we are, not in this, we are not in this city to feed the poor. We are here to confront and put on the gates of hell. Yes, and we'll do it by praying and by preaching. See, there are only two weapons to confront the gates of hell. Praying and preaching. Praying and what? And preaching. Can you say praying and preaching? Praying and preaching. Praying and preaching. Not gimmicks. It's not by sharing, sharing full stuff every Sunday. No, 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 no. We are not going to see, see, share, we will not, are you following me? We will take care of our members, but we are not sharing full stuff. You understand? We will give our members full stuff. Well, it's not going to, let's share full stuff. Some people now know they are sharing full stuff. People now want to come to your church because you are sharing full stuff. What's that nonsense? You come because you need Jesus. Why you not come because of Jesus? You not find out, ah, ah, this church used to take care of their members. Aha. Uh-huh. Are you following me? Are you with me? Are you with me, my friends? So don't be ignorant. Church of God, local assemblies, don't be ignorant of the warfare against you in your cities. The entire gates of hell in that city are risen against you. <laughs> you see that I say we are just two. Uh, our church, we are just two in number. We are five. <laughs> you see that I we are two. We are five. Oh. <laughs> In the eyes of the gates of hell, you are not two, you are not five. You are church. You are the church of God. <laughs> you are the church of God. Are you following me? And they know the havoc that the church of God can do, whether it is two or five or five thousand. Because even if there are two, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. They know that as long as it is the church, whether they are two or not, their commander is in their midst. 
So you say we are still, how many are we? The gates of hell can, the gates of hell cannot have our time. The, the gates of hell can, 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 can reason our matter. <laughs> From the moment you say you are starting church, they started reasoning your matter. You want to start church? You want to start saving people? You want to bring people out of hell? Ah. Are you following me? The, the kids of it are not seeing two or three or four or one thousand. They are seeing, is it the church of Christ? If it's the church of Christ, there is a war against you. There is war declared already. And this is what? The church of Christ. So friends, war was what? Declared against us. The moment we said we are starting church here. Are you following me? On this rock will I build my church. And the case of it will not prevail. Praise Jesus. Men of God, be ready. When I say men of God, I'm talking to all of you. You are men of God. You are men of God. You are men of war. So you are soldiers. Can you see that now? Is, is, is this the work of the pastor? Is the pastor the church? All of us are the church. And it is, it is for this purpose that personal wars are risen against your life. Are you following me? Are you following me? Better wake up. You say you're, yeah, you're applying to be, to, to, to be part of that church. <laughs> you're applying to be part of the church. Okay. <laughs> Let me first make you afraid. Let me make you afraid first. If, if I, now, I now land where. <laughs> you're saying you, 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 you want to be part of that church. Maybe you're seeing the way they're doing. You like the way they're doing their community life. Or you like the glamour and all of that. You are in for war. Can you say you are in for war? This is you are what? You are in for war. Because you are part of this church. So the battles of the gates of hell are against you too. So you can't afford to be slack as a Christian. Are you with me? Nora, you are joining this church, right? Right? You are in for war. <laughs> you are in for war. You are in for war. Talk where? You are in for war. Praise Jesus. So, the, the battle that the gates of hell raised against the church, are you following me? Some of it is shown in your own personal battles. The battles that the gates of hell raised against the church is some of the reason for the attacks against your own finances. Because they know that the church needs your finances for advancement. It's some, is the reason for some of the battles against your health. It's the reason for some of the battles against your marriage. It's the reason for some of the battles against your career. Are you following me? I'm making, I'm, 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 ma- I'm giving you wisdom. So you can't be slack, oh. But can I make you happy? This same church, this church issue, is the reason for your advancement in life. It's the reason for your billions. It's the reason why, it's the reason why your marriage will work. It's the reason why your health will work. Is the reason why you'll be great. This same church. This same church matter. It's the reason. But you are in for war. Can you say we are here for war? Can you say war, 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 war? Ah yeah, I love war. Because war means that we are taking souls from hell. Because us, we don't lose when, when we fight wars. We don't lose. O radaba kalaba shadabaya. Rakate sefa alapi atusuku fire baya. We don't lose when we fight wars. We fight to finish. We fight to conquer. We fight from winning. We have won, so we are fighting. We have seen the reports. And what is the report? The gates of hell shall not prevail. Talk to me, my friends. The gates of hell shall not what? <laughs> Say it like you mean it. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Oh my Jesus. Oh my Jesus. What a word of assurance. So before the war started, we've known the outcome of the war. Before Jesus is going to came to this city, we've known the outcome. We've known that they will rise to fight against us. That the gates of hell will rise to fight, fight against us. But we know the outcome. We shall not prevail. Why are we afraid? So why are we, why do we want to turn to gimmicks? Are, 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 are we so much in the hurry for, for people? Why do you want to turn to comedy? Why? Why do you want to turn to philanthropy to feeding the poor? Are we so much in the hurry to get, to get many people into the church? Are we so much in that hurry? We are in the hurry for souls. 
But we are not in a hurry for people. There's a difference. If you are in a hurry for people, you want to do everything, gimmicks and all of that. Are you following me? Philanthropy, everything that man's sense can do to bring people to, to church. If you are in a hurry for people. But if you are in a hurry for souls, you will intensify your, your warfare against darkness, against the gates of hell. Are you following me? If you are what? If you are in a hurry for souls, you will what? Intensify your warfare. Because know that only your conquering, only your victory can bring souls into the church. So you will intensify your preaching. You will intensify your prayers. We are in a hurry for what? For souls. We are in a, t- t- friends, talk to me. We are in a hurry for what? For souls. To fill this house. And what does that mean? We will intensify our prayings. We will inter- inter- intensify our preachings. We will intensify our prayers. We will intensify our preaching. We will intensify our confrontation of the gates of hell. We will intensify our assault against the gates of hell. We will intensify our affront against the gates of hell. We will keep pulling it out. We will keep shaking it to its, to its very foundation. How? By praying and by preaching. But we have the word of, of our commander. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Oh my Jesus. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. See the report. See the report. Praise Jesus. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We know the out- outcome. So, 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 when he says the gates of hell will not prevail against it, it's not, it's not saying that they will play draw. It's not saying they will play draw. It's not, it's not like Manu, Manu that, that played yesterday. They started with 2-0. Stupid people. <laughs> they, lo- they drew 2 to last last. Those on gates of hell have prevailed against them. <laughs> Nonsense, Manu. Those guys, they are, they are a set of clowns. I mean, Manu, but those guys are very annoying. <laughs> Set of clowns. Praise Jesus forevermore. So, gates of hell will not prevail against it. It doesn't mean they will play draw. It means that against this, the gates of hell will crumble. It will crush. It will. Are you, fo- are you following me? That we will prevail. That's the end of that scripture. Are you following me? That the church will what? Prevail against the gates of hell. Because in this battle, somebody must win. In spiritual battle, they are not draw. They don't play draw in spiritual battle. Are you following me? They don't, no draw, no draw, no draw, draw, no draw. Uh, okay, well, we play draw, we play, you just take that part, also take this part. No, 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 no. The whole land of the Philistines must be recovered by the Israelites. Because, because it didn't belong to, to the Philistines in, in the first place. It must cover the entire land. Are you following me? Because the land was promised to us, it's the land of Canaan. But the Philistines came and, and hijacked some of those territories. We must go back and get them at full cost, at our cost. Are you following me? So it's not drawn. So, if they don't prevail against us, if they won't prevail against us, what does it mean? We will prevail against them. We are not playing draw. No draw. And once we know of no draw, we are not leaving any ground uncovered. We are saving everybody we can save. We are saving everybody we are able to save. We are saving everybody, everybody that God has given to us. We are saving all of them. You know the meaning of draw? Uh, you take this part. Me too, I'll take that part. You just be doing your church in this angle. Don't come and touch this territory. Leave this territory for darkness. No. We are taking everything. Oh, friends, can you see this victory? And the gates of hell will not prevail. And the God? Tell me what, tell me, tell me the result of this battle. We won! We won! We won! Can you say we won? We won in our cities against the gates of hell. We won in this city against the gates of hell. GCCC Gondor has won in this city against the gates of hell. Glory Center Community Church Gondor has won in this city against the gates of hell. Our marriages have won against the gates of hell. Our health have won against the gates of hell. Our finances have won against the gates of hell. Our businesses have won against the gates of hell. Our careers have won against the gates of hell. Why? Because we have won. So don't be afraid. <laughs> Your business, don't be afraid. Because that is what they want to now be. The reason why they want to be touching is so that you can, you can deviate from church. But your, church, your victory is in the church. Because it's, not, it's, the, it's, the, it's the church that they won't prevail against to. So if you're not connected, I don't know. I don't know. So when they're trying to touch your business, touch your marriage, and because of that, you're trying back from church. They are getting what they want. That's what they want, Gongo. 
for you to separate from church. Because they know that your victory is in the church, in the local assembly. <laughs> oh, pastor, business is not moving with Jared. That's why I'm not coming to church. I, I, I feel I need to spend more time in shop. Let me just spend more time. Let me stay. Let me open early. And if I, my customer is to come very late. So that Bible study time is when customers used to come. Hey, they're already achieving their aim. They're achieving their aim. Your victory is in the local assembly. It's the, it's the church that the gates of hell will not prevail against you. So if you're not connected, they'll prevail against you. They're they not even fighting you. <laughs> you're already there. You're, it's you that we are trying to rescue. So you're part of who we are trying to rescue. Your soul. Guys, we have won. Guys, we have won. We have won. I wish and I pray that churches will see these things and they will not succumb to pressure. We won't succumb to pressures. We won't succumb, that won't succumb to pressures. Hey, go, go and get people to the church. Any hour, any hour. You are not getting people to the church. You are getting souls to the church. And we know how. It's through Jesus. Prayer and preaching. Prayer and preaching. Prayer and preaching. Through Jesus. Through the inspiration of the Spirit of God. We'll do what He tells us to do. Go where He tells us to go. And the gates of God shall not prevail against it, against the church. We have the word, except Jesus is a liar, then we have lost the battle. But we know that this Jesus does not lie. Because he's a God that cannot lie. He doesn't lie. Guys, we have one, right? So when you begin to see this thing, you now begin to believe in the vision of the church. When you don't see these things, you can't run, you can't run with the vision of the church. Because you'll be afraid. You won't, you won't plug in fully. When you say that we have won, you can put your life into this work. Are you following me? When you say that what? We have won. You can do what? Put your life into this work. You are not afraid of anything. Let me try and close it. Then we'll pick it up in the evening. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, the church that the gate of hell will not prevail against is the church that is built upon this rock. I'll pick it up from here in the evening. Are you following me? It's just, it's just as it's built upon what? This rock. If you're not built upon this, this rock, the gates of hell will prevail against you. And what is this rock? It's the revelation of the identity of Jesus. Or, or just basically, the identity of Jesus. And I remember what our senior pastor told us when he came here. He said that Jesus is the, how do you put it? That Jesus is the strategy. He said, the strategy I give you is Jesus. I think I'm understanding it better now. You remember that, our inauguration? He said, Jesus is the what? Is the strategy. Our senior pastor told us. He said, the strategy is what? Is Jesus. Because when it is Jesus, when it is this identity of Jesus, the gates of hell cannot prevail. Pastor Zach, he said, the strategy I give you is Jesus. He said, it is Jesus. The strategy is Jesus. Friends, it is Jesus. It's Jesus. Because it's upon this rock that he has planned to build the church. And it's only the church built upon that rock that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. If you're not built upon that rock, <laughs> the gates of hell will kick you down. They will prevail against you. And they will see it. Prevail against you does not mean that your church will stop existing. Are you following me? Prevail against you is like I've described before. Your church will exist filled with people People are in your church and they are in hell at the same time. They prevail against you. So don't think that if they prevail against you, it means that they won't, they, they won't be crowded in your church or that your church will go out of extinction. You are stressing yourself. Don't stress yourself. That's not how to know the church that, that the gate of hell has prevailed against. <coughs> ah! Let me state. Give me five more minutes. In fact, if the church, if the gates of hell prevail against the church and the way they show it is to ch- send the church out of extinction, they've not yet prevailed. The real prevailing is that what? They let the church to still be existing. Amen. So that they can keep their, their slaves both in church and in hell. So that people who have a claim to religion, they have a claim to God. Why? Meanwhile, they are still in hell. So that if you go and preach to them, they will already tell you I'm already a member of the choir. <laughs> they will tell you I'm already born again. They will tell you I'm already saved. That's the strategy of hell. The strategy of the gates of hell. They keep men in church and keep them in hell at the same time. Because if, 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 if the gates of hell prevailing against the church means that the church goes out of, out of extinction, 
Then, how many people are not, how many judges no longer existing? People are now thrown back on the road. We can go back and preach to them and bring them here. Are you following me? So the gates of hell have sense. Are you following me? So when they prevail against the church, one of the things you see is that what? The church is dead. Many people or people, are you following me? But no life. People are in church, but in hell at the same time. It's a strategy. Are you following me? So that if you go and preach to them, say, I'm already saved. I'm born again. And if the thing that can pay you the most, I speak in tongues. <laughs> that one can pay you. Because when, when somebody speaks in tongues, you no longer have the proof that this is not born again. <laughs> Are you following me? When, as, when somebody speaks in tongues, a Christian, somebody, I'm not talking of fake tongues now. I'm not talking of evil spirits. Real tongues. When somebody can speak in tongues, every doubt that person is not born again is cleared, is gone. So, how do you do somebody that can speak in tongues and is in church and in hell at the same time? What, 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 what claim do you want to, what claim do you want to, what, what do you want to claim? You want to tell people to, to, be, to be born again again? No. But the person is speaking in tongues, oh, then, church, hello, the keyboard. On church, yahoo. But he's speaking in tongues. He's even using tongues to do his, 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 his manga. Kalabasha, katalabasha. As he's pressing the, 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 the keyboard on his, on his laptop. You don't know how he is. The gates of hell will not prevail. Are you following me? Are you following me? So different, many churches, many local, many local assemblies, the gates of hell have prevailed against them. Why? Because they were not built upon this rock. Or they had not been upon Israel. They started with that rock. Because you can start with that rock and leave him. You can start with Jesus and leave Jesus. Because Jesus does not grow fast, but he grows far. You understand? Are you following me? Are you following me? He doesn't, that means Jesus, he's he's with another 20 years. He's looking at art. He's looking at what I'm making. Is he making? Is the guy making? Are they changing? Jesus does not grow fast though. He grows far. Far to the root, far, far established, deeply rooted and established. It is a fastly rooted. It's not a fast food. This is not just boiler of three weeks. So it doesn't grow just like that. Three weeks, quickly feed, feed the boiler. Let it. It's not, it's not boiler. It's not rice. It's village chicken. One year, the chicken is still there. Now we try to tear the tear. All those chicken that you try to tear that they almost tear your teeth. I can't break their bone. That is how Jesus Christ builds his church. One year he's still uh, he's feeding you, he's feeding the chicken. Each broiler. No broiler in this kingdom. Are you following me? No broiler, no broiler, no three weeks training, no three weeks church now grow. Church growth, church growth seminar. Seminar for church, church growth seminar. How? How? How, how is that church growth seminar? If no, no church growth seminar, don't let them lie to you. Okay, let me let me let me be fair. There's church growth seminar. But not, not, not the church of God, not the church of Christ. <laughs> Jesus grows his church by himself as he wants. You understand? As long as we are doing our own part. You understand? To fill churches with people, with crowds, there's, there are seminars for it. But to fill the churches with souls, no seminar. The only seminar is what Jesus Christ has revealed is our battle against the gate of hell. Is our confrontation and assault against the gate of hell. That's the only seminar. So you keep looking at Jesus to teach you the strategies of how to confront against. But the primary strategies are what? Prayer and preaching. So God cannot begin to show to you what to pray about, how to pray, where to go and pray at, those, at that particular junction on such a day. All those, those are strategies. But it's prayer and preaching. Go and preach. Go to, when you want to go and preach, you were planning to go through a battery, but go through a question. Those are strategies. You understand? But it's prayer and preaching. It's prayer and preaching. The case of it will not prevail. Are you following me? But it's the church that is founded, built upon the rock. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. So, Glory Center Community Church in Gondo, do you want to grow far? Do you want to go far? Do you want to bring souls to this kingdom? Then you have to rise up. The battle is real. Rise up and confront the gates of hell. Rise up through praying and preaching. And rise up because you have won. You have won, my friends. You have won. We have won. I, we have won. In this city, we'll deliver, we'll deliver drug addicts. We'll deliver Losho girls. We'll deliver people. Are you following me? We'll deliver a far priest. We'll deliver masquerades. Are you following me? We'll deliver people. 
from a cloth of darkness because we are going to put down the gates of hell in this city and we are going to fill this church with souls and build and, and build a lot of structures. Have many, 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 many souls in the church. That's our destiny, my friends. We are here for a time as this. I will pray that this revival will eat every church in this city, eat every local assembly, that will all take the battles to the gates of hell. I'll continue from here in the evening by God's grace. The gates of hell shall not prevail. It's the church built on the rock upon the identity of Jesus. Can begin to pray and talk to God and thank God for this understanding. And ask God to strengthen our heart. Ask Him to strengthen our heart for this work, for this mandate. Can we first of all thank Him because we are sure that gates of hell cannot prevail against us? Thank you for the victory we have in Jesus. For the victory we have in this identity. Oh, thank Him for the victory that the church has. Thank you for the victory we have. Because the gates of hell cannot prevail against us. Oh, can you thank the Lord? Can you thank Him? Can you thank him? Can you thank him? Can you give him praise? Can you give him praise? Give praise to Jesus. Because your marriage has prevailed. Your finances has prevailed. Your home has prevailed. Your health has prevailed. Your business has prevailed. Your career has prevailed. Your career is not about, it's about the church, it's about the local assembly. Can you pray and talk to God? You must understand the battle you are in against. You are up against. I must know that you have won. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can you pray that we, we don't succumb to pressures in this city? We don't succumb. We are not, we are not people that succumb to pressure. We take the battles to the gate of hell. We put down the gates of hell in this city. We release men from the paths of that. Baba Yada. Rekese konto pregete teke teke de baba ba. Rekete le brada baba 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 bosha. Rabba baba 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 shakata la balada. Reketo lo breketo lo krontis kete belenish. Je to 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 shake to 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 to